All right, let's get this party started. You are at the build two background video of the uh, air umbrella video that I am about to release. Of course, you've already seen that video, I assume. If you haven't, go down into the show notes of this video and uh, click on the link there to the main video that hopefully has millions of views. We'll see how popular it ends up being. So we're gonna talk about the background. I promised at the end of that video, if you watched all the way to the end of it, that uh, I'd talk about how I wired up these uh, leaf floors here with the USB-C cable. So let's jump right into it. These things have a throttle switch that uh, is something like I've never encountered before, but it has a simple potentiometer in there. Uh, first off, like I mentioned in the video, Usually I can just grab any switch that you find with whatever pinout it's got. You can go look up that number somewhere on the internet and you'll find a nice little data sheet that has like, okay, this is the ground pin, this is the positive, whatever it is. And I couldn't find anything from this. I was able to find other switches from that same company, but uh, I either wasn't looking in the right place or this was some special version that they made just for Ryobi partner with them for these things. I, I don't know. Regardless, uh, once I started back probing the connectors and all I was doing was uh, taking a multimeter and uh, of course with the disconnected, there's no voltage to find. So I just put it on potentiometer and just went two pins at a time. Just like, okay, what happens when I push the button and, and watch for changes? And so there were five pins on there and uh, uh, three of them were a standard potentiometer. Let me grab one of those. Okay, here we go. Classic, classic potentiometer has three wires hanging off of it. And the center one is usually a wiper that is going back and, or you can think of it that way anyway, uh, that's going back and forth between ground and positive voltage. So if you've got this like exposed resistor there, uh, when the wiper goes to ground, that wiper is kind of your, your signal wire back to whatever controller that you're using. When you run it to ground, that controller is gonna see ground. When you run it to uh, positive volts, whatever, usually five volts, then it'll see five volts. And then anywhere in between, you'll have this thing mapped out to like, okay, I'm if, if I'm at two and a half volts on a zero to five setup, then I'm at the halfway point, anywhere up, up and down. So simple tip, potentiometer. And that's what this throttle switch had in it as three of the wires, j just like this, that uh, a positive and a ground and a wiper between the two to indicate, okay, that, that that's how the controller that, that drives the fan motor gets its signal or indication of, okay, does he want to be half throttle? Does he want to be full throttle? And so that's what three of those wires are for. And I tried connecting a potentiometer to those and it wouldn't work. The leaf blower wouldn't fire up. So I, I didn't include a bunch of footage of me sitting there like, why won't this stupid thing work? And turns out the other two of, of the five uh, pins in there, so it had the three that were the, the potentiometer and the other two were like a safety switch. So potentiometers can wear out and you, you don't want, you know, starting to create weird signals and nobody wants their leaf blower to just be sitting there in the garage and suddenly, boo, boo, you know, and just start blowing air around on its own. Uh, that's my understanding of why they did this. They put basically a little safety switch in there that as soon as you touch the throttle, just as, as soon as that button, that, that little uh, uh, throttle switch gets any kind of action on it, it immediately closes these other two contacts to say it's basically enable. And so that's what I did on, on my controller is like, okay, I'm just gonna put switches on there. And the first one was an enable switch. And if you try to run the potentiometer before you do that enable switch, it puts it into some kind of fault mode. You gotta start over and, uh, and get it working. So through back probing it, it was like, all right, I've gotta have, if I wanna turn this thing on, I've gotta have, I've gotta control, I've gotta close those first two and then have a potentiometer on there. And uh, I, I thought about actually having potentiometers on the controls for the, for the backpack. And it's like, I don't think there's any value really in slowly speeding this thing up. I really wanted it 
arguably to run at maximum all the time to see if it would work. And so I just opted to go for basically full throttle. And so on that potentiometer, when you would normally have, it's like one of my wires came off, uh, when you would normally have a wiper going from ground to power, I think I figured out that full throttle was when the wiper was at the uh, five volts. And so I ended up just, rather than having to rig a potentiometer on there, I just said, okay, gonna make a, a rocker switch or this toggle switch that just connects five volts right to that signal wire and it'll just jump straight to, to full throttle. And then these things have a separate button for boost. And so I had the, the five contacts for that switch and then when all those are closed, there's an extra boost button that was completely separate that goes to the uh, motor controller inside the leaf blower. And so I just added a third switch on each of the sort of flight stick looking, joystick looking controllers. So the first, just three, uh, three toggle switches on there that the first one is the enable. The second one shorts out the not really shorts out uh, the, the wiper to five volts to turn it on. And then the third one just goes right to boost. And so you just have to kick them in that order and then it doesn't fault out and, and it works just fine. The issue that I ran into with that, I had it all figured out. It's like, okay, this is gonna work great. And then when I buttoned it up, it didn't wanna work. And I had put the, I'll show you a video here. I had put uh, that USB-C port on the side as a, as a way to connect to it and had it all connected up and the thing wouldn't work. It's like, why is it not working? <clears throat> and it turned out that I was trying to, I, I didn't want to take, to take these things apart again. I wanted my wife to be able to, or my kids, if they want to go just blow some leaves <laughs> in the, the cul-de-sac or something to be able to pick this thing up and use it. But the problem was setting up my own, uh, try, trying to put five volts Re, re, basically replacing the potentiometer with this five volts to the signal wire, that wouldn't work while the throttle switch with its own potentiometer, actual potentiometer in there was still connected. It was keeping it from getting proper voltage. So it, it was basically competing with it. My, my little switch was competing with the internal potentiometer. So I had ended up to make it super easy. I basically uh, bought cables bought a, a variety pack of cables. Is this one of the right ones? Yeah, so this has, uh, this was the right style plug and just bought a set of them off of Amazon and wired this in to the halfway point on the cable that goes from the motor controller to the throttle switch and just stripped it back, soldered it um, and, and put heat shrink tubing on there. And so I could just plug in plug this thing in and ha have a separate connector that came out to the solder everything to the USB uh, breakout. Yeah, so because I made a nice plug in there, I was able to just open the leaf blower back up, unplug from the throttle switch that's in there, and then everything worked just fine with my little uh, USB plug on there with, with my remote control. But what that means is I have to break the case back open when I'm, when I'm gonna break this thing back down so we have two useful leaf blowers, um, I'm going to have to uh, plug the thing back in and then it, this remote thing won't work anymore. So it's like, ah, oh, bummer. I, I was hoping it would work together, but I would have had to have put some sort of external enable switch to like disengage that uh, potentiometer there. Okay, on to the USB side of things. Yeah, so I use a lot of cables on my project, specifically like the wind power on a car kind of thing. It's like, I need to be able to run signals and, and power, and I don't wanna to have to be, like if I'm tearing something off the car, if I wanna go back to normal mode, I wanna be able to unplug things. I did that on my milling machine, but it's, it, it's nice to have plugs. So you don't have one item soldered to another. And in this case, I didn't need to transmit any power between, I mean, it's, it's a control. So we're talking milliamp signals. And rather than making these big, the, the ones that I've used in the past are these aircraft cables that can handle like five amps per pin. It's like, that's not what this, I, I don't want, and I don't want this giant plug sticking out of the side of the leaf blower. So I thought, why not 
try out these USB-C cables. They seem really robust. You can flip them around whatever direction that you want. Boy, wouldn't that be neat. And it is neat. But uh, I went and looked up the USB-C cable uh, pinout to figure out how to connect it up. I'm just like, this isn't really okay. Looking at the diagram, I was like, yeah, okay, this makes sense to me. But then I bought, and where are they? I had it sitting right here. Come on, I even cleaned up. It's on my laptop. Uh, I bought these little USB-C breakout boards and thought, okay, I'll just connect up to these things. And they, these are actually really nice and that they have little contacts for all of the wires on, on each side or all, all the contacts anyway on each side that you can solder individually to. However, I couldn't get it to work. And I would take a USB, I'd take two of these things and I'd put a cable into one end and the other. And as I started probing, it had a really peculiar pattern connecting these things. And, and part of it, most of it, is because with if, if you think of my hand as a USB-C plug going in, because they, it's not keyed to control the orientation, the standard has to allow for it to flip uh, both ways. So you, you end up having like two rows of connections. And so they make it so that uh, basically this connection and, and my pinky down here would have to be the same one when they flip over so that it'll work in either orientation. You, and you can, I'll flash up a picture of the, the pinouts that you find online. And you can see all these things line up so that when you flip it over, it's like, okay, this one connects to, to that one. But these breakout boards aren't set up that way. So you have to, if, if uh, the, the cable isn't necessarily populated with a wire for every single one of those. And so the, uh, the, the cables, in order to be able to use the conductors in the cables, whichever way you want to go, you have to apply your own jumpers from one side to the other to connect those up. And it, it doesn't seem to follow exactly what the connection diagrams show. And I'll just show you what I came up with. There's my uh, little potentiometer pinout and how I figured out to, to connect those up. But down here, I went with a, like, basically looking at all the contacts on these guys and lined it out that I had to connect. Okay, if I want, like this is one side and then this bottom is the other side and I had to go like, and, and I just came up with my own, my own numbers. Pin one were the, the, the grounds basically in the corners and two, I said, okay, I have to connect, I have to jumper this side with the opposing side. That makes complete sense. And three, two, three, and four, those all make sense that you had to flip it around but then after that, it seems to get a little bit cattywampus. And then on this other end, I couldn't just do that on both ends. I had to do a little bit different jumpering on, uh, on the other breakout board on the other end. So I'm sure somebody watching this is far more of an expert. I'm not an expert at all on USB-C. Of course, USB is a universal serial bus. You're supposed to be using these cables for communication, sending little pulses. You'll have a clock pulse and okay, on, on this clock pulse, I'm gonna give you this piece of information. So you're communicating down just basically two, two conductors plus your, plus your power and ground. But I wasn't gonna to bother to set up a, uh, a microcontroller inside the, uh, inside the leaf blower just to do this serial communication. That would have been really slick. I could have communicated anything I wanted to, but it's like, nope, I just want this for straight through continuity type communication. I just want to replicate the signals that the uh, throttle switch is giving to the controller and then and, and we'll be good. So I'll give you a little close up of this if you want to end up using something similar for any of your projects or yeah, your, uh, maybe someone that knows a lot more about this standard can explain why I had to jump around that way and do different jumper wires on one end than on the other. And I don't know if that's a, a computer versus phone kind of, probably probably that's what it is. And I'm just not reading the standard quite right. So let's see, what else? 
Did my machine just go to sleep on me? Oh, yeah. And then uh, the other thing that I ran into is that we know not all USB cables are created equal, right? There are uh, ones that are just for power that you could just be charging your phone with, and then there are ones that are capable of transmitting data, but it doesn't stop there. I've, I've always ignored, oh, this is a USB 2.0, this is a USB, whatever. It was like, hey, they all work for what I need, more or less. But uh, it turns out the USB 3.2, right in the middle, the, uh, let's see, pins, well, whatever you want to call them. I had my own numbers on them. But there are four pins right in the middle of a USB-C connector that has this extra twisted pair. And it's it looks like on the diagram that you've got four extra pins, but you really, and there are four extra pins, but you really only have two wires. And again, you have to jumper it on uh, the your breakout board, depending on the style that you get, so that it will work in either orientation. And until I got a USB 3.2 cable, there wasn't any way to use those pins. I don't know if I had to, I probably could have gotten this to work without it, but I wanted the maximum number of conductors available. So I bought USB 3.2 cable and then, wow, it also downloads files off of my, when I've recorded a video off my phone, it really downloads those quite a bit faster. So, hey, there's a good, Good on the folks that figured out that standard that, hey, we're giving this extra communication possibility in there that, yeah, it is quite a bit faster than the other cables. So yeah, there you go. I think that was everything I wanted to cover with the uh, USB-C stuff and controlling these things. So thanks for watching. I am already, I've already been working on the, the next project. I'm getting back into some uh, rain gutter, well, rain gutter power, sort of, that I've figured out a way that I think I can greatly increase the amount of hydropower that I was able to get off of my rain gutter. So already working on that. Can't wait to share it. If you haven't already, like, subscribe, all that good stuff so that you see my videos when they become available. See you then.